This right here is OpenAI's chat GPT agent called Operator. And people are already using it as their own personal assistant to complete tasks like ordering a coffee, buying a house, or even building and deploying an application. So let's take a slightly closer look at it. OpenAI just released its open preview for Operator. It's an AI agent that actively interacts with the digital world, well, websites, and completes tasks for you. This computer using agent, also known as a CUA, is a model built on top of chat GPT 4.0 and its vision capabilities, but it's trained to interact with web elements such as buttons, menus, forms, and being able to scroll. For this video, I thought I'd explore the benefits of using it as a developer. Since OpenAI claims you'll no longer need to use a web-specific APIs to interact with the web, instead, CUA will do this for you. Firstly, let's take a look at how it actually works under the hood. CUA works by processing raw pixels on the screen and then navigating with a virtual mouse and keyboard on a virtual machine. This goes through a loop doing three main things. First, perception, where it takes a screenshot of what's on the monitor. Second is reasoning, using chain of thought to consider what it's doing and what actions need to be taken. And third and finally, performing that action, essentially clicking, scrolling, or typing. Currently, in order to access Operator, you'll need two things. First, you'll need to be in the US. I'm in Australia, so I've downloaded a VPN so that I can access it. Second, you'll need the pro subscription of ChatGPT, which is $200. This is quite expensive, so I'm gonna upgrade my version for this month only. You can access Operator by heading to operator.chatgpt.com. Like the regular ChatGPT, you have a prompt entry here with a few examples of how it works. I want to see how well it performs at publishing a draft blog I wrote on my Wix Studio website. The first thing that it does is open up a browser, which kind of looks like a virtual Google Chrome. And it's also something that you can take control of in case the operator agent actually starts performing the wrong tasks or it needs some assistance. The first thing it did was head to Bing. Yes, Bing, not Google, since I assume OpenAI's collaboration with Microsoft is still going strong, and search up a Wix Studio. Here I can see that the mouse moves to the login button and selects it. Since it doesn't have my credentials, it prompts me to manually enter these into the browser. This expands the remote session, allowing me to enter in my own details, which I do in order to log in. Then I select finish up to give control back to the agent. And this is where things get interesting. OpenAI's agent is smart enough to head over to the sites page and then select the merge site, which is the one that I requested to be updated. It browses into the site and then on the left menu goes to blogs. On this page, there are no drafts visible. However, there is a hidden dropdown which you can select to filter only for drafts. Operator selects this and then selects the most recent draft. So this is already pretty impressive. Before performing any action, it confirms with me that I do in fact want to publish this blog. I then continue to watch as this agent goes and selects the publish button from the top right over here. Very cool. Though, as a developer, testing is pretty important. So I'm going to ask this agent to also double check and view the public facing website to see if the blog is in fact published, which it is. The next tasks should be a little bit more challenging. I want to see if this agent can actually make updates to my website directly. Since my website is on a no code platform, it's technically point and click, which is exactly what this agent is meant to do. I've given it the request to update my menu, removing one of the items in the navigation, which brings me to this pop-up security prompt that says that there's potential risk to performing this task. And it makes sense since I'm making changes to a live website. I select mark safe and resume. Here I can see it loads up the editor and starts playing around with it. For a first time use, it's doing quite well for this uniquely designed website I've got. Here it's clicked over to the menu. It's selected manage the menu, which brings up this pop-up over here, confirming that I do want to remove design reviews. I'm gonna change my mind. I want to remove the dev hackathon. It's something I ran a few months ago and I'm not really using that page anymore. Here it prompts me once more to confirm that I want to remove the dev hackathon option. It clicks on the additional sub menu to be able to remove that and then selects delete. Now all that's left is to publish the page, which it requests whether I should do or not. All up, I'd say that it did a pretty good job at managing changes on this page. I'll want to definitely test it out a little bit more to see how it goes at making more complex changes. 
There is an expanded view you can open up and I did see if it could possibly do a little bit more complex of a task where it changes the font weight of my menu. This requires a little bit more nuance because it does require you to change the font and the styling and it wasn't able to completely perform this. So there's obviously going to be some limitations from what it can and can't do. I did also give it some other programming tasks like finding a good GitHub library that I could use to convert a markdown text into something I could view on a React project. And while it was pretty good at browsing through Google or accessing GitHub, in most cases, it would just pick the very first item that it thought was relevant. And because of that, I would have to give it better prompts. Being specific, like one that has a lot of stars, uses and is compatible with React 18, etc. I'll do some more testing this month and find out exactly what it is and isn't capable of since I've seen some pretty interesting examples online where people help it find the cheapest insurance in an area, building out the structure for a research paper, or even just buying some clothing and crypto, of course. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to get it to test.